Hi everyone, this is Billy. I've been uh, developing more and more 3D printed parts for Crystal Radio. Today I want to show you the latest one I got. It is a varying inductance crystal radio that I designed. You can uh, receive the AM, MW radio stations through this radio. I put in additional sockets or holes for you to mount the screws so any kids can uh, use wires and screws to mount the equipment and crystals to make a great crystal radio. This radio can support different type of detectors including crystals, and most fats in particular 3D cube. Asking for is is it safe to travel? Dahil bumaba na yung number. I also designed two versions. The left one is for the round 10 millimeter wide ferret core. The right one is for a flat ferret core. This video contains the testing, 3D design, how I make it, and also the indoor testing. Let's first hear from the outdoor testing. Direct Selling Center Shop. Kung may pagkakataon, bumisita lang dyan sa taas ng Worldwide Plaza. Meron din sa labas ng MTR Exit B ng Central, meron sa Crossway Bay, sa Chun Wan, at sa Yun Long. This is Filipinas Week in Review on 864 AM. We are just going through questions that our listeners want answered this week. Uh, okay, Kabayan Ria, another question from our mailbag. All right. Next, let's look at the 3D modeling. I am using Fusion 360. Uh, it is a tool that sounds complicated at first, but once you know the basic skills, you can design any crystal radio components easily. I may create another video to show you how you can create simple things like a fusion, uh, a fuse tube, so you can put in a diode or a crystal. Uh, or something like another variable capacitor holder. So you can put in a copper plate and create an FM crystal radio uh, using the variable capacitor. So I created two versions, the flat and the rounder ones. The most challenging thing with creating this is for the testing. I wasted um, a lot of hours because each printing took around 12 hours the baseboard alone took, took six hours and then each individual component will take between one to three hours um, the trick is to design this coil frame the one that is in red with the wall which is thin enough to create a higher Q coil and also uh, a bigger range in tuning. If the wall is too thick uh, and the coil wire is too far away from the forward core, 
the range will be narrower. Like these two, I compare two different versions. One on the left has thicker wall, the one on the right has thinner walls. This one is the coil with the thicker walls on the frame. So variable inductance ranges from 195 microhenry down to around 30 microhenry. This one is from the uh, printer with a thinner wall. Variable inductance starts from around 30 microhenry. The highest around 209 microhenry. As you can see, the range of this one with the thinner wall is much bigger. The broadcast radio range is around 0.5 MHz to 1.65 MHz, representing 9.5 times in, in ranges. My first 3D printer, the Creality Ender 3 Pro, I heard they're coming out with the new one, version 2, which is even better, more quiet, and much sharper in the printout. So after 12 hours of printing, I printed a black one and also a coffee color one so I can swap the parts to give a good color balance. Half the parts from black, half the parts from coffee. So here's the fabrication method. We use 0.04 times 60 threads of these wires, which is better for AM radio. Alternatively, you can use uh, the laminated wire or magnet wire but use the 0.5 millimeter or higher or thicker wires otherwise uh, reception quality will not be good so I wind this uh, 60 turns and then I solder the end to remove the thread and expose the contact points to create the tabs you just insert a tracer um, to protect the the other part of the coil just gets the tapping point uh, above the metal so we can put a solder there and connect the wire. A bunch of M3 screws to screw down onto the hose. The hose are printed uh, with a size of 2.8 millimeter, so it will fit firmly with an M3 screw. The first few Twists, the first three turns may be harder, but as you uh, drive along, uh, it will be easier to screw things in. So sometimes the 3D printer result is not as good as you want. There's a lot of hair, so you need to remove those, use sandpaper, then it will be very smooth. So this is the tuning bar with uh, the frequency range of the radio. I just use it to hold <coughs> the variable inductance in place. There are two guiding pins and then are the screws that I'm screwing in now. So let's test if it is uh, smooth enough. Uh, after we put in this circular gear, spur gear, they call it, uh, seems to be quite smooth. We need to measure the inductance, uh, turn to the lowest inductance, and turn to the maximum inductance, mark the values, use this formula, maximum divided by minimum, it should be equal to or more than 9.5 times. If you got this figure, it will be great. Then you may not need uh, the two-band ca fixed capacitor, otherwise still suggest you to add the two-band uh, fixed capacitor to expand the range. Next, continue to mount the M3 screws. There's a lot of screwing to do here. Um, for connecting the circuit together, you can reference to my circuit diagram. You can use the solder to solder wires and solder plates. Or if you want to go original, you can use the bare wires and mounting screws and just fix the wires with the nut. It's how people build the original crystal radios using just wires and nuts. So we're almost done here. We've got the uh, capacitor C3. The last step is to apply the LC formula. 
to find out the two fixed capacitor you want to have the two bands of your AM radio I used 500 PF and also 300 PF okay that's all my talking here are the indoor testing I will test the uh, crystal diodes and in that sequence uh, if you like my video click like subscribe and share with your friends too until next time bye now how is Bye 香港之声FM 请锁定FM87.8AM675，全天候为您服务。You're listening to AM864。